The Trinity Church in uh, New York, Wall Street, uh, is currently an Episcopal uh, parish, been active for quite some time, uh, part of New York City's history for more than 300 years. In 1696, a small group of Anglicans, uh, members of the Church of England, petitioned the royal governor Benjamin Fletcher of New York, then a mercantile colony, for a charter granting the church legal status, which was granted in 1697, and the first Trinity Church was erected at the head of Wall Street facing the Hudson River. The first Trinity Church building was destroyed in the Great Fire of 1776 during the Revolutionary War. Uh, the, uh, one of the other chapels, St. Paul's, was saved by a bucket brigade that ran from the Hudson River up to the chapel's roof, which I find remarkable that that even worked. But still, we go on. Uh, following the inauguration of, of George Washington in 1789 as president, uh, George Washington prayed in the St. Paul's Chapel. The next year, the Second Trinity Church was completed. Uh, the church faced Wall Street was no was longer and wider than the first, and the steeple's 200 feet up. That's a pretty tall one, and uh, for the brief period, New York City was the capital of the United States. Uh, notable parishioners from this time include John Jay and Alexander Hamilton. So such is the August history of this great building. In 1838, the support beams of the Second Trinity Church buckled, and they had to hire John Upjohn, an architect, to repair it. Uh, he recommended demolishing the structure, reconstructing a new church. And so they did another one with English Gothic architecture, yada yada. And uh, designed a church that looked like 14th century English parish church. Uh, this, uh, I guess, the final rendition of this church, Trinity Church, uh, was consecrated on Ascension Day in 1846. And is considered one of the first and finest examples of neo Gothic architecture in the United States. So there's your little history lesson. 1846. Now that is about the time a lot of what we consider mud flood or what's called mud flood uh, events seem to have happened around that time or shortly before it so a lot of things are destroyed and reconstructed at that time or they're supposedly uh, half the buildings are buried and they say oh we had to raise the city up like they did in sacramento and uh my sense is, why didn't they just build the levees up instead of lifting the so-called whole city up 20 feet from the mud? Apparently, the uh, they just said they just fill that in, and actually, it is uh, is not the story. The real story is not what they tell people. So there's something funny going around of uh, that time period. Sometimes earlier, maybe more than one time in history, weird things have happened like that. But I wanted to focus on a particular headstone. Now this headstone is the headstone of James Leeson, who's buried in the cemetery of the Trinity Church. And I do believe he's buried in 18, let me look, 1846, okay. And uh, there's pictures of it, and there's talking about, you know, the Masonic symbols at the top, what they mean and everything. And we'll go into that in a second. But I mean, it's like, uh, you look at this headstone, and you tell me, is it, does something seem a little out of place here? Uh, it's just plain odd. For one thing, it looks like something was poured over the headstone and engraved and then the underneath the heads the, the cover another headstone seems to appear uh and i'm just going is this the usual practice so i started investigating uh how headstones were made and they're usually made out of solid pieces of stone and uh by 1846 they did have some master uh, masons uh, that did headstones there and so this headstone, you tell me what you think about it because I can't call it a mud flood thing and I can't call it 
uh, Mandela effect. I just call it just plain weird. To me, it's all wrong. There's just something horribly wrong with this headstone. And I'm trying to think, what are they trying to, what were they trying to cover up? And why does it look like this? Now, keep asking questions. What do you think? Um, course correction here. He was buried in 1792. Uh, and the box uh, dot code at the top of his headstone was a mystery for quite a few decades. And they figured out it was uh, meant death remembers a Masonic thing. and But that's all they talk about. I mean, look at the headstone. Come on, people. <laughs> How would you not mention, oh, that looks weird. There's other writing underneath the coding. I mean, you can see it. I wish I could see the actual headstone in person and do a rubbing, but it's like, really? 